Hello everyone, Professor Christensen here. Today we are going to look at the accounting cycle in 10 minutes. All right, here's what we're going to do. The accounting cycle is how a company records all of the things that happen, all the financial transactions, and um, eventually we're going to go through all of these steps and we're going to come out with financial statements, which is what companies use to report their results to other companies and entities and people. All right. And so let's take a look at these seven steps. All right, here we go. First thing that happens, a transaction. So a transaction means that something happened that affected assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. We're going to take a look at some of them right now. All right, and what do we do? So first thing we do, we analyze. So analyzing means you're going to decide what accounts have to be debited and credited. And um, this is the place where some decision making has to be made, right? In some cases, in real life in a company, a lot of this is automated and the, and the, dis, and the um, computer knows, but in still in many cases, there are decisions being made. So let's take a look at how this works. Here's four simple transactions. Um, issue common stock for cash. So if you remember from the debits and credits video, if you haven't watched that and you're not familiar with debits and credits, make sure you go back and look at that. Um, you're going to be debiting cash and crediting common stock. Um, you pay rent. Remember paying means that you um, are paying out some money. Money is going out. Credit cash. Cash has a debit balance. We're crediting it. Debit rent expense. You buy equipment on account. So your equipment and your accounts payable are both going up. We're going to debit equipment, credit accounts payable. Finally, perform services and get paid. We're going to debit cash because our cash is going up, credit service revenue. Again, these are on the debits and credits video. All right, next thing we have to do is to journalize. So that means this sometimes the journal is called the book of original entry. It means that we're going to write the debit and credit into the books. And this is what's called the journal entry. Notice that it has a date. It has the accounts. The debits always come first. There could be many debits and credits, but all the debits come first. All the credits come second. They get indented. And you have the debit amount that goes with that account and the credit amount that goes with that account. Debits on the left, credits on the right, just as always. So this is what a journal looks like. Let's see when we have all of our entries journalized together what it looks like. Oh, and by the way, debits always have to equal credits, right? We know that. Or the dollar amount of all your debits has to equal the dollar amount of all your credits. Um, don't forget that. Even if you have 10 debits and 10 credits. All right, so when we're done, this is what our journal looks like. Here are all of our journal entries with the debits and credits. Now, we're going to come back to this in a minute you could see that there's every transaction is here and the debit and credit with those transactions. But what if I said to you, we have a, say we have a thousand of these transactions, which companies could have millions. And I say to you, how much cash do we have? Or how much do we owe our, um, our suppliers and accounts payable? It's a difficult thing to find out because of the format of the journal. So we're going to solve that problem. All right, after you analyze the transaction, what do you do? You journalize it. Okay, so now we know how to journalize. Now, we're going to post it to the ledger. So remember I said, how do we figure out what's in our cash account? The ledger has a list of every single account that the company has. And in this um, ledger, we're using a, a T account here, which is a T. Here's the top of the T. Here's the middle of the T. T account, it shows all of the debits and credits to that account, um, and then eventually it'll show a balance. Okay? Now, no decision making here. If you have a debit here, you put a debit here. If you have a credit in the journal, then you put the credit into the ledger. If you're doing this by hand in a class, make sure you check off all of your items because it's easy to get, you know, to miss one or to put it in the wrong place. Okay, step three looks like this. This is what our ledger looks like when we're all done. Okay, notice that every debit has a credit, right? That goes with it. And that's true for every ledger everywhere in the world. Our cash account is showing a balance here, right? Because there's more than one entry to our cash account. Remember, cash has a debit balance. So when you're finding the balance of an account, you add up one side, you add up the other side, and then you take the difference 
and the balance goes on the larger side. So here we increased cash, we increased cash, we decreased cash, right? So add those two up, subtract the 2,000, and you get a balance of 25,500. All right, by way of reminder, what does the ledger show? It shows each account with every debit and credit that affected that account, and then its balance. Okay, step four, trial balance. So now, trial balance, let's look here for one minute. The trial balance is a list of all of the accounts that a company has. Now, we kept this very simple. It only has six accounts, but you can have 100 accounts, 1,000 accounts. It's the same thing. It shows the account with its balance. Remember we found the balance of cash and it was 25.5? Here it is here. Now a trial balance goes in particular order which is very handy later on when you want to make your financial statements. The assets are listed first and assets come in order of liquidity which you'll learn in your class and we'll look at that in other videos. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expense. Okay. If you have 20 assets, put those first. 20 liabilities, put those next. It doesn't matter, right? So trial balance serves a few purpose, purposes. Number one, it gives you a very handy list of all of the accounts that you have with their balances. So if you needed to know, for example, how much do we owe our suppliers? Oh, here it is. Accounts payable is 15000 right? Okay, the other thing is it could help find mistakes. For example, what happens if equipment is in the credit column? Well, that would mean negative equipment. We can't have negative equipment. So that means something went wrong somewhere along the way. All right. And finally, trial balance is going to help us make financial statements, which we're going to see shortly. Okay. All right. Does a trial balance show transactions? Nope. A journal shows transactions. A trial balance shows each account with its current balance. Now, Notice there's a lot of words here, guys, so don't get nervous. You, you know, go back, review the video. There's a journal, there's a ledger, there's a trial balance, there's financial statements. There's all these different forms, and they all have different names and different formats, but once you do them, practice, 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 you'll get used to all of them. All right, here we go. Next thing we're going to do, adjust. Now, the adjustment process is a little bit complicated. We're not going to go through the whole thing. Let me just give you an idea of what it's about. An adjustment happens at the end of an accounting period, so the end of a month, the end of a quarter, end of a year, and what happens is the company has to record any transactions that have not yet been recorded. For example, you are, say, say that you owe um, the bank money on a no payable. Well, every day you owe more interest on that no payable, but you're not going to record that interest every day because that would be kind of silly, right? So what we do is at the end of the period, then we record the interest that we owe and we record a bunch of other things. There's a separate, there's separate videos on adjusting because the adjustment, adjusting entries tend to give students a hard time. But for now, let's just look at one so we can see how the adjustment process fits into this whole accounting cycle. So let's say that one of our customers came along, we did some work for them, we haven't paid them yet, and we haven't recorded the transaction. So it's the end of the period, we're going to prepare financial statements, we want to make sure to get this revenue into our financials. So we're going to prepare a journal entry, this is an adjusting entry, we debit accounts receivable credit service revenue, put those into our accounts. Remember our service revenue already had $2,500 in it. Now we're adding the thousand. So now our revenue is going to have 3,500. We're going to do a new trial balance an adjusted trial balance. And that shows accounts receivable and the new amount for our service revenue. Adjusted trial balance is important because that's what we use to prepare our financial statements. All right, let's take a quick look at our financial statements. The income statement is revenues minus expenses equals net income. That shows us how we did. And then our balance sheet, which balances, notice these numbers are equal, 41.5, 41.5, shows us what we own, cash accounts receivable equipment, and what we owe. We owe accounts payable, and the rest belongs to the owners. Notice that we have a new account here called retained earnings. Retained earnings is exactly what it sounds like. It's the income that the company had that's been retained in the business. And that belongs to the owners. So that is equity. All right. Where do the financial statement numbers come from? The adjusted trial balance. Finally, we're going to close. Okay. Step seven, we're closing. Okay. 
So here's the situation. Let's see it say it's the end of a month. We have service revenue. We're going to get rid of that service revenue because next month we want to record new service revenue. So this, the revenues and expenses become, remember we said, part of our retained earnings. So we're going to put the revenue and expenses into retained earnings. That's how we get our balance in retained earnings. And then, voila, our service revenue, our revenues and expense accounts have zero balances. That also goes for dividends if you come along with those later, but there's also another video on closing. All right, then we start all over again. All right, by way of review, I want to keep this under <laughs> in the 10 minute thing. So we're going to keep going here. And here are our seven steps in the accounting cycle. Thanks so much for watching. I wish you all the best in your accounting studies. If this helped you, please subscribe to the channel. See you next time.